Hello everybody, this is AK Wasp, and I just wanted to bring you guys a quick video log uh, illustrating that I just received my uh, Rhino Cape. I actually stayed up pretty late last night to uh, unlock it, and I did the new Elverkin quest, and also obviously completed the fight kiln on my first attempt. Barely, you know, didn't have very many uh, resources left when I was done. But I wanted to uh, basically highlight my thoughts, I liked it, and show you guys how I did. Hello everybody, so I just wanted to bring you guys this uh, tutorial on how I did in the fight kiln and as I'm showing you right now this is a video taken uh, while I was doing the fight. So here's my uh, melee equipment setup with you know pretty good melee and range defense. Use the chaotic rapier as my melee weapon and I had the eagle eye kai shield on at all times which is just Real good magic defense, and it doesn't give any negative bonuses to uh, magic or strength attack. I also had full Ganodermic switch for my uh, mage attack with Polypore Staff, and I had Armadil minus the helm with the Chaotic Crossbow for my range setup. And two things I would have definitely. Oh, and then I had the Infernal Adze for my pickaxe for dealing with the armadillo creatures. And then obviously I had a pretty decent pack yak with a mixture of uh, brew flasks and super restores. And of course four uh, prayer restores, yeah, that's what they're called, alongside overloads and two super prayer restores which are the uh, orange looking potions in my inventory. Uh, extra yak pouch Unicorn with thousand uh, scrolls didn't really get much use out of the unicorn But anyways two things I would have definitely Changed and actually I'm planning to do the fight kiln again probably later in the week And I'll uh, video it and try and beat my time which should be pretty easy because This first attempt although successful did take me two hours, which is just absolutely ridiculous but, I mean, that's because I didn't really do the research ahead of time and really knew what to expect. I did watch a couple of video guides, and I will actually have them linked on screen and in the description. So I did have some idea of what I was going up against, but for the most part, I just had the RS wikis, you know, list of what monsters are coming up on what wave, and just kind of dealt with it as it was coming up. Uh, two things I'll definitely be changing next time around is bringing in Ava's Alerter because, you know, that just definitely would have helped. I chose the Fire Cape for my cape uh, because of its great defenses, and obviously I'll be bringing the Rhino Cape along next time because of its defenses. Um, but I'll also make sure I definitely have an Ava's Alerter. And also, uh, the Polypore Staff is just one of my favorite mage uh, weapons available because of it's just it's just so easy to use and you don't have to auto cast a spell just because it just works fluently and yeah that's right there the uh, fire cape this big old obsidian golem dude is just tearing it up but that kind of looked cool anyways so yeah definitely next time I'm going to bring an Ava's alerter and bring what's it called an armadill battle staff alongside with armadill runes so i can cast obviously the storm of armadill spell because after doing this uh challenge last night i watched some uh, youtube videos of other players who you know successfully did it and, and even you know are straight up farming the onyxes because it actually is pretty good profit if you have a decent method for uh, what's it called for completing this mini game? But I don't think I'll be doing that. I mean, it's fun, but I kind of like the idea of where when you're fighting normal, or not normal, but more 
typical boss monsters, you have a chance of a random loot, which could be, you know, something that's eh, like a Bandos Boots or something, or something that's awesome, like, you know, a Torva Plate Body. So this is more of a, uh, if you decide to do this for uh, profit to farm at this mini game, uh, it's good. It's definitely great profit, and it's, the value of Onyxes are going to slowly go down because of this game, but it's still great profit, but it is, you know, a profit that's more or less set in stone um, as far as the rate. So, anyways, yeah, so the Armadillo Battle Staff and Spell, I think, would help a lot because it absolutely tears on some of the higher-end monsters, but... To be fair, the Polypore Staff tears pretty well also against a lot of the melee monsters. And so I'll definitely be bringing that along also because it's a lot cheaper than Armadale. And unless, except for the Jads and the boss at the end, I'll probably use Polypore on the rest of them. Um, except perhaps some of the waves where you're getting, where you're tanking damage from all three combat styles. So I actually liked how, uh, I, it wasn't by design, but with the gear setup that I used, I actually had 12 prayer at any time, uh, as long as long as I remember to put the Varrock Helm on when I was using the melee gear. I always had 12 prayer bonus, which was uh, you know kind of cool. It was always the exact same number, but yeah, that worked out pretty well. So yeah, it did work out pretty well. Um, however, I won't be doing that again next time because uh, alongside the two other changes I mentioned of bringing the Armadillo Battle Staff along with the spells obviously um, which I'll be using against Jad and the final boss and possibly even the Armadillos I'm not I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with the Armadillos the uh, second time around um, what was the other thing I said I was gonna change oh yeah that's right the uh, the app was alerter so I'll be bringing that along, um, and then obviously the, the change of the fire cape to the newer fire cape. But um, also important is I won't be bringing the Virox helm along. Um, I'll be bringing a, uh, what's it called, a full Slayer helm instead, um, because it's actually a little bit more of an aggressive weapon. Um, not weapon, but it's a, it's a helmet, so it's obviously a piece of armor. But it um, I'm making the decision based on trading off the superior defensive stats of the Varrock Helm, both in melee and range defense, as well as it offers some uh, absorption for the fact that the Slayer Helm actually has about half, a little bit more than half, uh, probably about 60% of the defensive bonuses, and it has no prayer bonus, but it does give an offensive plus 3 to range and a plus 3 to... Uh, me, uh, the mage, which should actually you know make the uh, battle faster, which in turn you know should make getting hit less, so less importance on defense and making the uh, whole game as a whole uh, shorter, so you know less need for prayer. So the fact that the prayer drains slightly faster should be totally mitigated, if way more. So I'll actually uh, consider bringing less prayer restoring potions on the second trip, which I'll be uh, doing later this week, because of that reason. Now, I also wanted to comment on that I kind of uh, enjoyed the... It kind of has a structure, the uh, way that the kiln is organized where actually the first 10 way or I guess the first nine waves are all kind of ranged base and then you fight your first jet on wave 10 then the next 10 waves are all like magic based and then you fight another jet on wave uh, 20 and then the third set of 10 waves are all melee based and then you fight another jet on wave 30 and then the remaining seven or I guess six whatever the remaining a uh, quarter of the levels are all um, kind of a hybrid situation where you have to tank out multiple different uh, attacks from the combat triangle. So I thought that's kind of cool the way it's organized. Uh, makes sense. It's kind of uh, 
yeah, it, it's kind of balanced. But uh, the one thing I didn't really care for is that the whole battle seemed like a huge uh, safe spot fest, meaning, uh, I mean, obviously it's nice to be able to use a safe spot, but like, more, most of the time, less than half of the monsters who are on the screen, you know, fighting you, are actually fighting you. I mean, there was uh, one part, I'll uh, say it when I get to it, but it was, uh, I think it was the six big round melee, you know, whatever those things are, it kind of almost looked like teddy bears with claws, but anyways, they were just, you know, on the screen, and, you know, totally safe spotted, very aggressive, you know, late in the game, close to level 30, and, you know, I just was like, hey, they can't actually hit me right now, so I just went to the bathroom and came back, and I was like, you know, whatever, like, that just, you know, is, is really not the best feel for a game that's supposed to be very challenging, but anyways, you know, the first 20 waves, uh, you probably saw I was pretty much hugging that one, uh, I guess barrier you'd call it, that was like a, a fence, that was, or not really a fence, more like rocks protruding out of the ground that create like an L-shaped uh, safe spot, which pretty much you just kind of stand in the inside of that L and you're safe from most of the monsters for the first 20 waves, and then uh, for the next set of 10 waves, which you're... Uh, seeing right now have uh you know all the mo there's that safe spot in the middle so even then you know you get hit by more monsters at a time but for the most part you're only getting hit by half except right here this is the worst well not actually the worst but i hate these armadillos they completely destroy you because they attack with i will i think it's a, a melee attack but if you can't pray melee against them or they will just continually hit you with uh, by slamming on the ground, which hits a uh, typeless damage for like 250 to 300, just all the freaking time, and it just completely destroys you. And you have to get melee distance with them so you can smash their armor off with a pickaxe, and and then you can obviously, as you can see, safe spot them. So it's like, duh, what's the point here? But anyways, I think right here is where I went to the bathroom. Yeah, so just you know, nothing's going on. You know, high part and end of that you know mini game, and I just was like, "Hey, what's up? I'm gonna go to the bathroom and not worry about it. Like, not have to log out as you would have had to in the old fight caves or anything. Just you know, totally log out. Not just you know, walk away from the computer, come back a minute or two later, without any concern about anything. But anyway, so yeah, from I think from this point on, there's a Jad in every wave, if I'm correct. So. No, no, no. Okay, so that was uh, that was wave thirty, and that's from this point on. You get hit by you know just a whole onslaught of different uh, bosses. Although actually, there's like three waves near the end where one's all melee, one's all range, and one's all magic. Not particularly in that order, but yeah. So I found that to be you know rather entertaining and. Uh, you know, I had a lot of resources going through most of the battle. It was really just at the end when I was just not prepared to deal with the new mechanics of the boss. And I just got really destroyed when I shouldn't have. And uh, next time I'll I'll know what to expect. And, you know, just have having the uh, Armadil, or Storm of Armadil spell will work a lot better against the Jads and against um, that final boss. But what I did, I do like the new graphics. That's that's something I wanted to comment on during this video. Is that the new graphics look a lot nicer than the old Tazar uh, graphics, and you know Jad looks a lot beefier and meaner, and you know they have this uh, purple theme going on, as opposed to obviously the uh, the Tazar had a, a lava theme going on. So I actually heard that there was discussion that they might be adding a purple glow. Or you meaning a uh, bloom effect, or maybe a particle effect, depending on whatever, uh, to the rhino cape, which would make sense because you know the fire cape has a lava effect because it came, comes from lava creatures. Makes sense that this uh, rhino cape should have some sort of purple effect since all these uh, all these monsters are purple. So, anyways, here's the uh, the main fight, or not the main fight, the very last battle 
which is this big, you know, squid, octopus looking guy uh, with all these tentacles that are just hanging out. And the thing, it actually took me a little while to realize that some of them attack a range and some of them attack with magic. And that if you hug a particular wall that only has one type on them, you can, you know, effectively pray against it. But I didn't realize that for a while. And I also am pretty sure that I missed attacking the head a bunch of times when it popped out of the lava because this battle just took way longer than it should have. And also, I obviously was uh, using the Polypore Staff as my offensive weapon, uh, which didn't hit quite as reliably or as hard as I had wished it would, and as well as I expected the Storm of Armadillo would. And also using the Gandemic Armor was you know, great for uh, magic absorption and magic defense, uh, for the same reasons that I use it in my uh, solo Corporal Beast guide, but against range, it just, it just had no range defense, so pretty uh, pretty nasty against range. So definitely praying against range is, use is almost compulsory for most of that fight, even if you're only getting attacked by magic tentacles, because if you accidentally forget to turn it on and you get hit by, you know, like one, two, three hits of the range attack, you pretty much lose most of your health right there. But despite the fact that I was almost out of resources, I did actually have a significant amount of uh, the crystals left over. So I probably could have used some restore crystals and uh, constitution crystals to uh, regain some of the health at the end. And then also there's this... Uh, because I finished the, uh, what's it called, the mini game before the end of the uh, two weeks of its release, I uh, received Jagex's early early bird bonus, which was a 70k experience lamp in a skill of your choice. And unfortunately, I kind of lagged out, and I gained that experience in Dungeoneering, which I meant to gain it in Hunter. But, oh well. Not total loss, but okay. So I hope you uh, guys enjoyed this clip and find it to be useful. And definitely subscribe and stay tuned for uh, the end of the week when I'll be having uh, an act, a more proper guide, if you want to call it that. Uh, probably not a guide, just a, a walkthrough of some of my observations of what to watch out for when you're doing the fight kiln. Um, and obviously, as you notice here, I'm not using any next gear or spirit shields. So yeah, I have some dungeoneering equipment, which I consider to kind of be something that every high level player should have, but not necessarily, you know, billions of dollars in armor from the next armor. And obviously I was able to do it without any next armor. And I feel that, you know, you really, really don't need it. Um, it would be really hard to do this without a uh, lot of resources and a beast of burden. So, I mean, you could probably get by with a tortoise, but really having the pack yak helped a lot. So, anyways, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and tune back in for my uh, walkthrough of my second attempt get a spare copy of the Rhino Tape. Thank you for watching.